Hi guys, I'm Jamie Brown with JaimeLaMaman.com and I wanted to take an opportunity to tell you guys a little bit more about the Keurig Revo. I just wrapped up my comparison review of the Keurig Revo to the Tosimo T55 to the CBTL versus the Nespresso Latissima Plus and the Nespresso Virtual line. So if you wanted to see how those guys stack up against each other, you should check that guy that review out. Uh, I also did a full write-up over on my blog, so you could just read that if you'd like. But I wanted to get into some of the details of each individual machine, and I didn't get to touch on all the features of the Revo in that overview, so now I'm going to talk about everything I know about this guy here. I bought him at Bed Bath & Beyond. I paid $229, and they always have a 20% off coupon. You can frequently get those flyers in the mail, or you can sign up for their uh, email list, and you can get the coupon that way, or there's a few other ways you can get it. Um, but that coupon is pretty readily available, so you could probably get 20% off of that $229 price tag. Um, he's a, a really big machine. That was the first thing that I noticed. First impressions when I took him out of the box was he was bigger than all of the other ones. But I thought that that might mean that it was uh, beefier or it uh, you know, worked faster or there was some benefit to the size. And I found that there really wasn't, other than maybe the water reservoir is uh, one of the larger reservoirs, so that might be a benefit that you get from the size of the machine. Um, you know, first impressions to uh, just a general overview of what it does. It doesn't make any coffee, it doesn't make teas or um, cocoa. All it does is uh, lattes, cappuccinos, and espresso. Uh, it does have a built-in milk frother which is pretty great, and that was a, a big thing for me. I wanted to make sure that the machine had the frother and the espresso maker all in one compact unit. I didn't want to have to make the espresso then go buy a different machine that I had to froth the milk with uh, because I don't like espresso straight up. I just like it in lattes or cappuccinos, so I wanted to make sure that the machine could accommodate that, and this one does. Um, it does not have a built-in filter, uh, as far as I know, so I uh, take this water reservoir and I go and fill it with filtered water. A little low right now, so um, I'm going to do that. Actually, Okay, so you guys saw how easy that was. Pop this off, fill it up. Stick it back in, and you can put the top back on too. So it has that nice big um, water filler or a water reservoir over here. Uh, it has a nice drip tray down here that's easy to remove, and built into the drip tray is uh, where you can throw away your capsule. So you can pull the whole thing out, take this capsule bin out, and dump that out. Uh, and another thing that I do want to mention um, is that it can be kind of messy. So it's easy to remove this bottom tray and it's easy to dump that capsule thing out. But when I moved this from my counter over to where it is now so I could do this review for you, I found out underneath was actually a pile of moldy milk. Um, because we ended up filling this guy up, this milk pitcher, a little too much and we had a milk explosion. Uh, the machine was pretty easy to clean up. But what we didn't know is that uh, anything that spills in this tray will actually get under the tray and onto your counter too. So if you have a milk explosion or something like that, pick up your machine and clean under it. Um, the other machines we had similar messy experiences, but most stuff didn't get under the machine. So that's just something, an FYI, on here, clean your counter under the machine if you end up buying it. Um, but yeah, the bottom tray, nice and easy to remove. Uh, the capsule collection bin, nice and easy to remove. You do see that you can have two heights for your mug. Uh, this is set up right now for a tall mug, but you can flip this down. And now we can put our short little uh, espresso mug there. I don't have short little espresso mugs, so not really an issue for me. Um, and then here is your milk frother. So um, I'm going to turn it on. And you can see it's flashing, and it's going to beep um, when it's ready to go. Actually, I think it is ready to go. It stopped flashing. Everything's good. So that's one of the fastest warm-ups I've seen of any of the machines. Um, and then you simply take your capsule and you pop it in the top. I'm going to pull it back. Take the capsule, put it there. Put your mug down here. And you're going to close it. 
and then hit your button. Now one of the um, things that I really like about this machine is uh, this uh, closing mechanism is really beefy. It's made of metal, it feels really solid. Uh, the closing mechanisms on almost all the other machines were plastic and you know, it just didn't feel as solid when it's punching those holes in the top of the capsules as this machine does. So that was definitely a benefit. Um, I am going to uh, go ahead and make a short espresso. So I'll hit that button. And then um, that's unique to the Keurig. You heard that it beeped and it said do 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 do. Uh, and none of the other machines have that audible uh, alert that tells you, okay, I got the message, I'm going to make you a beverage. Um, Actually, I don't know that it meant that. Aha. <laughs> Apparently that audible alarm was not going to make you a beverage. That was, I'm ready to make you a beverage. Um, but either way, none of the other machines beep. This is the only one that does. Uh, you'll also see that it has a nice little LED light in the water reservoir. It's the only machine that has that too. It's a nice little aesthetic uh, piece, which is cool. And what you will also notice if you saw the Nespresso Latissima Plus, it automatically started doing stuff with the milk at the beginning of the beverage making. This one didn't. I have to tell it that I want an espresso, and it's making the espresso now, and then when it's done, I'm going to tell it to froth the milk, and then once the milk's frothed, we'll combine the two to turn uh, our drink into a latte, versus the Nespresso that just sort of did it all at once. Um, okay, so it's done. It's flashing. I think it might beep when it's done, but maybe not. Um, so, okay, it's done making the espresso. Now I'm gonna move on to making my uh, froth milk. The pitcher's in all the way, and now I'm going to hit the froth a cappuccino, or froth a latte button, and it's gonna start. And uh, I do wanna mention that this uh, built-in milk frother, since it's built into the unit, both froths and steams the milk. The Nespresso also froths and steams the milk, but all of the other machines have a separate frothing unit, so they can't steam the milk, they only heat it. So it froths and heats. And we definitely did a taste test, and we could tell that the steamed milk was a little bit sweeter than just uh, heated milk. So there's a very minor flavor difference. Uh, but personally, I think if you're combining your milk with something as strong as an espresso, you're not really going to taste that flavor difference in the finished beverage. But I guess it depends on you and how sensitive your palate is. Um, so it's going away on the milk. When it's done, we'll combine the two. And I'm going to tell you also, uh, another big difference between this machine and the Latissimo is that it has a button for cold froth. So the Latissimo Plus does not have a cold froth button, it only has four buttons on top. The short pour, the long pour, uh, the cappuccino, and the latte. This one has the same four buttons, a short pour, a long pour, a cappuccino, and a latte, and then it has a fifth button that is for frothing. Now with the Latissimo, you could uh, customize your buttons with the right, around, right amounts of water and milk. With this one, uh, you don't really have to customize your buttons for the milk amount because you're adding it yourself. So you're gonna customize your milk by uh, changing how much you add to the pitcher. So if you want more froth or less froth, you can do that, or I'm sorry, more or less milk, you can do that by adding more or less milk to your pitcher. Okay, so that's its beep that tells me it's done frothing the milk. Um, and now I'm going to combine the two. And another complaint I have about this machine is that when you go to combine your beverage, uh, you have to take this top off and it's covered in milk, as you can see, and then you have to do something with it. So I turn it upside down and put it on my counter, but it tends to drip and it can get a little bit messy. So I don't find that to be ideal. I wish that, um, you know, this, there was something neater I could do with this lid. There was a place to put it or something because I, I have this problem frequently. So now I'm ready to combine my milk. So I'm holding the foam back with my spoon and then I'm going to add in the right amount of foam and I'm done. And so you did notice that I had quite a, a bit of milk in here and I didn't need uh, nearly as much as it made. So uh, I thought that that was kind of a drawback at first, um, that it didn't make exactly the right amount of milk. But since my husband and I both like lattes, we actually now find it to be a benefit with this machine. Uh, that we can make all of that froth milk at once and then we can both make our espressos and we have enough milk uh, for both of us so we don't have to run it twice. So that's sort of depending on your personal preference that might be a good or bad thing. 
Um, and then it's also nice that you don't have to reprogram the buttons to customize the amount of milk you're adding. You add the milk, so you just customize it yourself. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is the pods. So with the Keurig, you have exactly four pods to choose from. And this was kind of a big deal to me. Uh, at first, I thought, hey, this is really bizarre. This is a machine made by Keurig, and Keurig is famous for having thousands of coffee options on their, um, their brewers for coffee. But on their uh, espresso brewer, they paired it with, um, or they partnered with uh, Lavazza, and Lavazza uh, decided that really all you need is four kinds of coffee. <laughs> they have a Rainforest Certified Sustainable Blend, uh, they have a classic blend, an intense blend, and a decaf blend. And I say blend, but they might be single source, I'm really not sure. Um, but that's it. That's all you have is these four flavors. And so for us, we drink decaf, we had one flavor. And if you didn't like their decaf, you're kind of SOL. Um, because that's, the, that's all you have is that one type. So I personally find that to be a drawback. I, as a consumer, like to have choices and options. Um, we thought, hey, if the four flavors were phenomenal and there really was no better coffee, then this could definitely be a benefit. You don't have to spend hours picking out exactly what pod you want. Um, it, it cuts down on your storage space. You don't have to store 12 different varieties or flavors. Um, so you, kept, you could see this as a benefit, but personally, we weren't thrilled with their decaf, so we thought the fact that we could only have that decaf was a drawback. Um, so all in, it's a good machine. It frosts the milk well. I like that it steams the milk. Uh, it works quickly. I kind of like the audible alarms. Um, it, so I guess to clarify, the first alarm we heard was the alarm that said you're we're ready to brew. So when I said that the brew time was really, or the up time was really fast, that I turned it on and it was ready to brew very quickly, I was wrong. It actually was from when you saw me turn it on to when we heard that first alarm. That's how long it took to heat up. Uh, then I hit the button and it told me again that it was going to start brewing. It didn't tell me when it was done brewing, but it did have an alarm that told me when the milk was done. So for me, I frequently uh, wake up, I have a kid, and I'm making our breakfast, and I'm making my breakfast, and I'm starting my espresso, and I'm checking my email. It's nice that it has that alarm that says, hey, come back to me, my milk is done. Um, so I liked that aspect of it. I wish some of the other brewers had that. I like that it had the cold froth feature. That's nice if you're going to make an iced latte, then you don't heat your milk. You can just have the cool milk. That's nice. Um, I like that it's simple, that the buttons are easy to use. I do wish that I had um, more options on the flavors, and I really wish that it was a smaller machine. Uh, because we have so many appliances on our kitchen counters. We have, you know, our stand mixer, our blender, our food processor, our toaster, our coffee maker, our burr grinder. You know, we. Uh, have such little counter space in most kitchens and it's getting occupied by so many small kitchen appliances. Uh, having something that is definitely a luxury item like a uh, espresso maker, it would be nice if it took up less counter space because otherwise you have to prioritize between it and all of the other machines we have on our counters in our kitchen. So I wish that it was smaller, um, I wish that it had more flavors, and I personally wish that it auto dispensed the milk into your cup because at six in the morning, I don't necessarily have the mental capacity to froth my milk and then make my espresso and then combine the two. That's kind of why I want an all-in-one simple machine. So those are the three things that I would improve about this. Um, but I do love the price point. I love that it's a lot cheaper than the Latissima Plus that I'm comparing it to. Um, but because of those other reasons, I don't think that it's a superior machine. If you have other questions or comments or concerns or something I didn't answer here, leave it in the comments and I would love to get back to you on it. Thank you so much guys, bye.